muted. And Nancy, if you'd like to start. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Nancy Beller Sims, and I would like to welcome you to today's Water Resources Dashboard Learning Seminar. Today's seminar is on drought and soil moisture. This learning session will be recorded and placed on the Water Resources Dashboard as a button underneath the tools discussed today. The link to the dashboard will be provided at the end of this session. These learning sessions are being put on by a number of organizations, including, and this is in alphabetical order, the American Planning Association, the American Water Works Association, the Association of Metropolitan Water Agencies, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the Water Environment Federation, the Water Environment and Reuse Foundation, and the Water Research Foundation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, okay, so next slide is great. Um, as I mentioned before, my name is Nancy Beller Sims, and I work within the NOAA OAR Climate Program Office as the Director of the Sectoral Applications Research Program and also lead the SARP Coping with Drought in support of NIDIS Grants Program. I'm going to be moderating today's session. Next slide, please. Before we get started, let's review a few housekeeping items. We've taken a screenshot to show you an example of the attendee interface. You should see something like this in the upper right corner of your own computer desktop. You've joined today's presentation listening through your computer speaker system by default. If you prefer to listen through your telephone, locate the audio box on the web controls and select Use Telephone. The dial-in information and access code will then appear. You can send questions to our speaker at any time using your questions pane. Simply type in your question and click Send. At the end of all the presentations, we will take as many questions as possible. These will be read by Lauren Fillmore, who will be joined by Barbara Schwartz, who are both from the Water Environment and Reuse Foundation. I want to acknowledge their work at this time, because without their efforts, these uh, webinars would not exist. Um, next slide, please. We're going to first talk briefly about the Water Resources Dashboard, and then um, NOAA's National Integrated Drought Information System, or NIDIS Executive Director Viva De Heza, will take us on a tour of the Drought Outlook, Current Drought, and Soil Moisture sections of the Water Resources Dashboard. Following this, we'll open the floor for questions. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk very briefly about the Water Resources Dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is a result of the partners mentioned before and the EPA doing a joint study on water utilities and extreme events. There were two findings that came from that study that are relevant to today's discussion. The first finding is that many water utilities said that they had difficulties finding in one location the water information they were looking for. Therefore, this water dashboard was developed to pull together weather, climate, and water information into one location. The second ask from this community was that some of the information presented is new to them, so they would like to be, they wanted to be educated on the data, information, and tools that are available. Therefore, once we established the Water Dashboard, which was released March 22, 2016, we began to develop this learning series to address this need. Next slide, please. Today's speaker is Viva De Heza. Viva is the Executive Director of the National Integrated Drought Information System, or NIDIS, and is responsible for the implementation of the public law that authorized NIDIS in 2006. She supports agency, congressional, legislative, and policy priorities to achieve the NIDIS mission goals and objectives. She serves as the NIDIS liaison for the Western Governors Association and the Western State Water Council. She oversees a staff that coordinates all NIDIS regional drought early warning systems around the country, ensuring that regional successes and lessons learned are connected and linked to each other to create an integrated national drought early warning information system. Before joining NIDIS, Viva was the Section Chief of the Office of Water Conservation and Drought Planning at the Colorado Water Conservation Board. She was there for seven years. As Section Chief, she oversaw and managed the comprehensive revision of Colorado's 2010 Drought Mitigation and Response Plan and authored the Water Adaptation Section of Colorado's first Climate Action Plan in 2007. Before, going to before coming to Colorado, Viva worked in Austin, Texas as a water resources planner and general manager for Texas Groundwater Conservation District. 
Okay, Viva, it's all yours. Thank you, Nancy, and thanks for the opportunity to uh, to um, take folks on a tour of this of this uh, particular resource. Um, I'll probably uh, go back and uh, pull on my my uh, my experience as a, uh, a water resource planner in my past jobs as I walk through this. Um, I'm going to start first with giving you a brief kind of tour of these uh, areas of the of the the dashboard that Nancy alluded to. And then I'm going to switch hats. And for a few minutes, I'm going to kind of talk to you about the dashboard with the hat of a water utility manager or a water resource planner, more, say, in the context of a state agency or even in a local kind of local context or local setting, and give you an idea of how uh, a dashboard such as this and the resources could help uh, would have helped me and would and that would help me to do my job more effectively as a local planner or a local water utility manager. So as Nancy mentioned, I've been asked to kind of give you a little tour of the drought outlook portion. Um, so I've got control, I believe, of the uh, of the screen right now. So I'm going to scroll down. The areas that I'm going to focus on for the next few minutes are the area of the drought outlook right here where my cursor is pointing. And then if we continue to scroll down through this, You'll also find in another couple of areas where I'll be focusing on, which are the current drought tab um, and the soil moisture. So let me first uh, start with the current, um, coming back up here, the drought outlook. Um, let me say that this, this toolkit and the resources that you find in this toolkit has a lot of connection um, and correlation to another um, kind of sister, if you will, um, website that NIDIS, the National Integrated Drought Information System, is responsible for hosting and for maintaining, which is the national, the U.S. Drought Portal, also known as drought.gov. It's, it's essentially drought.gov. So when you click on the Drought Outlook from the Water Resources Dashboard, um, it takes you immediately to drought.gov. And here, you go into another world of information. So when we talk about Again, going back to the dashboard, when you click on this, you are expecting to see a series of maps that are going to show you current conditions about what the drought is looking like right now, where drought can be found around the country, the intensity of the drought, and how it's expected to change over time, whether it's going to be ameliorated or whether or not it's going to continue to persist or to worsen. So the way to do that is when once this takes you to the U.S. drought portal, which is a different part, it's not part of the dashboard necessarily, but it's linked to the dashboard, from this place you have a whole host of opportunities to delve into what is currently drought looking like right now. So you've got access to the U.S. Drought Monitor, you have access to the U.S. Seasonal Drought Outlook, which is a product that the NOAA's Center for uh, uh, Climate Prediction Center puts out. You have access to the Drought Impact Reporter, and I'm not going to click on these because we're going to find these in other parts of the dashboard that I'm going to talk about. And then you get a snapshot of what the current wildfire risks are around the country. Then you get to delve into regions of the country. And you get to um, focus in on very specific parts of the country um, and get more kind of in-depth information about the status of drought. I'll come back to that here in a little bit in my presentation. If we continue to scroll down through the dashboard, we make our way to these two tabs here, current drought and soil moisture. And I'm going to talk about soil moisture in a few minutes, but let me first focus on the current drought tab. So again, this takes you to, again, to the drought portal, to drought.gov, but it takes you to a very specific part of drought.gov, which is the data, maps, and tools. And here you get exposed to a variety of different uh, themed areas to look at. So right off the bat, at your fingertips, when you click on that, that particular tab on the Water Resources Dashboard, Current Drought, you get right now a snapshot. Your dashboard is covered with a series of maps that give you a quick snapshot of what drought looks like, not just from the perspective of the U.S. Drought Monitor, you also get a snapshot very quickly of what the Palmer Drought Index looks like. And if for folks who are not familiar, the Palmer, or just as a reminder, the Palmer Drought Index measures dryness based on two parameters, precipitation and temperature. And it has a lot of relevance depending on 
the sector in which you are making your decision. So in the ag sector, the Palmer Drought Index gives us a lot of information about current drought conditions. In other parts, in other sectors of water, uh, of water management, maybe not so much, but it's still a great kind of first snapshot or glance of what drought and dryness is looking like around the country. And then the other areas that you have a snapshot immediately are the U.S. Seasonal Drought Outlook. Again, this is a product that's put out by NOAA's Climate Prediction Center. And this tells you over the next three months, this was released, for instance, in December of, of uh, 15th of 2016, it tells you over the course of the next three months, what is the drought outlook for the United States? And then these colors through the legend, you can see that they give you indication of how long they're going to persist or if they're going to worsen. And then finally, the other snapshot that you get is relevant to the, to the agricultural community. If I click on this map of the, uh, the U.S. corn areas experiencing drought, you get another um, layer, another series of layers of information that, con that continuously kind of build out this information for you. So you get, yet again, the U.S. Drought Monitor. You get the corn information. But if you continue to scroll down, you get this information represented in a number of different ways. And these graphics you can pull out and put into presentations. You can use it in communicating to leaders within your organizations or just with, with ag producers if you're happy to be talking to an ad producer. You also, as you continue to scroll down through these slides, you get to see not just corn, but you get to see a snapshot of what soybeans are doing, where soybean production is being affected by drought throughout the country. You also get hay areas, which is important not only for hay production, but also for cattle and grazing. So if you've got cattle um, production going on, this gives you an idea of where hay production is being impacted by drought, which could, would also help with management decisions. Um, and then you finally get uh, areas of the cattle industry that are being affected by drought. And then finally you get winter wheat. So um, this is a great tool if you're interested in kind of seeing uh, annual production, or not, I'm sorry, not pr annual production, production um, numbers associated with these crops that are being affected by drought. And this information is put out by the USDA. Going back to the dashboard, sorry, um, let's go back to the current conditions. Um, if you drill down on the U.S. Drought Monitor, I'll take this map here, you, this will give you a little prompt that just gives you an indication that you're leaving the climate dashboard and you're moving on to another site that houses more information about the Drought Monitor. Now you're being taken to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln's website and this is where the Drought Monitor is is housed, if you will, and here you get to continue to drill down. So you get to um, basically click on states if you want to get state information. You've got great information here over here on the right on the toolbar that gives you a, a narrative that actually explains to you what the drought is currently looking like in different regions of the country and what the prognosis is for coming in or out of drought. You, you do, if you look down below the map, you have the ability to download the map for PDF, which is great, again, for presentations and for communicating with decision makers or stakeholders in the region that you're communicating with. You also get to look at statistics comparisons to see how this snapshot compares to past weeks of the U.S. Drought Monitor information, um, changes maps so you can see gradually how the drought has changed over time. Um, so there's some good time series information in here as well. So this is kind of just the beginning. This dashboard at the outset basically is just a um, the first table setting, if you will, of information. And you have the ability to click on these graphics to get even more information. The other great thing about this particular um, tool or this particular click is that it exposes you, if you look here at the top, the second level of tabs exposes you to even more information and data that's related to drought. And so as a decision maker, and depending on what your role is within the context of water, you may be wanting to get information that, that goes more into the effects or the impacts of drought to different particular water-related sectors. Um, so you might want to look at this impact on fire. You may be wanting to drill down on, well, 
what does this mean for agriculture? So I click on agriculture, and here you have yet another table setting, if you will, of additional maps and graphics, delving into things like soil moisture, the veg, the veg dry index. It gives you an idea of the, the dryness of vegetation across the country, which can sometimes be a great indicator of what drought is doing in the region. You get a great, you get access to the evaporative stress index. So this gets to the issue of it's great to know precipitation and temperature, but what's evaporation doing? Because a lot of folks believe, and there's science is starting to suggest, that perhaps understanding how evaporation changes over time is a better indicator, an earlier indicator, um, about what how a drought is starting to form within a region. So the evaporative stress index is a great way to start looking at how evaporation demand is changing as the drought is increasing or lessening. Um, and you start to get information here about the Drought Impact Reporter, which is another great tool. So as a decision maker, uh, it's not only important to have information about hydrologic conditions or meteorologic conditions, but also about how the drought is affecting industries or users in the region and stakeholders. Um, and then you also have access through this portal or through this tab to National Weather Service National Forecast Maps which also give you indication of prediction and forecast of drought going on in the future. Um, if you're interested in getting kind of a paleo perspective on drought, how has, because sometimes the history is a good way, of, is a good indicator of what's to come, you can delve into the paleo climate um, regimes associated with some of these regions. Um, you can also drill down into more if you want to get more information about outlooks and forecasts. This particular tab gives you access to even more information, and a lot of these maps are come to you and are developed um, by NOAA, by the National Weather Service, and by the river forecast centers that are in the National Weather Service. So you get information about stream flow and about snowpack. Uh, let me quickly now go over to the soil moisture map. Again, I'm now back in the Climate Resilience Toolkit, and I'm back in the Water Resources Dashboard, and now I'm moving to the Soil Moisture tab. By clicking on here, this takes you to a great map. Now, this map doesn't really do itself justice because there is an enormous amount of information that you can access from this one area. You can not only access the current um, kind of snapshot of what soil moisture is looking like around the country, and as you can tell from this map, as of December, let me take a look at here, the daily, um, which is today's daily. So these little tabs up here, as you can tell as I move my cursor across these tabs, you can click on these individually to get different maps that give you different uh, information about the status of, of soil moisture. And so on this particular map, which is the daily map, this gives you as of today, what's the calculated soil moisture as of today? And it, it's, it, you know, it comports with what we know, what, we, what we're hearing in the media, what we know uh, weather forecasts have been, which is a lot of the country has been experiencing a lot of moisture recently, and so you're seeing a lot of that play out with soil moisture. You can take a look at it from a monthly perspective, um, and as well as the last day of the month. If you're interested in knowing um, anomalies, so the representation of soil moisture information and data uh, from the perspective of anomalies, so the departures from average, departures from norm, you can look at that as well. So here we start looking at the anomalies for um, the depart. So what is what's the difference between what we're seeing today and what it's been looking like in the past? So you have the ability to do that from a daily perspective as well as from a monthly perspective. And then you can look at the same information from a percentile ranking perspective, which for a lot of folks is very beneficial when they're trying to communicate to a stakeholder. It's difficult to sometimes um, communicate millimeters of soil moisture, but if you can represent it into uh, in terms of, well, it's the third worst you know, soil moisture uh, situation or the fifth worst, you have the ability to do that by looking at some of this information. And then the changes of soil moisture from a monthly to a seasonal perspective are available vis-a-vis -vis this particular tab. So this is a great, um, a great resource for soil moisture information. This soil moisture is another uh, parameter, another indicator of drought that has, become, has, be, has been the focus of a lot of research in the last several years um, and is the focus of a lot more future research projects that are going to be happening within NOAA because it's really getting out at the what is the ability of the soil moisture 
to help us to either get through droughts or to help us get out of droughts. Um, so the ability for soil moisture to retain that moisture um, for longer periods of time and the ability to, to measure that soil moisture content is very important as we look at all the parameters for, for what drought is looking like. So let me quickly segue to kind of a way that a water resource or a water utility manager might look or might use this dashboard if you were um, making daily decisions. Um, Nancy had mentioned my past position at the state of Colorado. I actually worked very closely with the majority of the large to mid-sized utilities within the state. And we worked on active drought planning. We, lurked, we worked with them on helping them to identify good drought indicators, good drought triggers, both in things to monitor for responding to drought, but also in how to develop good sound plans and develop good mitigation strategies to weather droughts when they happen and to build up long-term resilience. And so as a, as a water manager for the state of Colorado, one of my primary responsibilities was I was responsible for monitoring drought conditions. And so as the state would start to move into drought, we would start looking at, okay, my my role was was multifold. I was responsible for not only making decisions about operations. Uh, I was also responsible, and a utility manager might find themselves being responsible for making decisions about policy, about how to reallocate resources, how to uh, allocate funds, how to and whether or not to activate a drought plan. Um, whether or not to activate a particular mitigation strategy or measure in that drought out in that drought plan, and then finally, I was responsible, and a utility manager would be responsible for how to communicate current drought conditions, not just to a board of directors or to a leadership, but also all the way down to the uh, the homeowner or the um, or the recreational business owner or the agricultural producer and even the media. So how would I use this information? Well, I would look to my drought plan and I would start to see that in my drought plan I have a series of indicators or triggers that I am monitoring. And in the past, before this dashboard existed, I was responsible for looking at, say, 20 different sites at any given time, 20 different websites I would have bookmarked or tabbed in my, uh, on my directory that I would look at. And now with the creation and the existence of this great new water dashboard, I can just go to current drought, I can take a quick snapshot, a quick glance of what drought is looking like. I have the ability, if I want to, as I demonstrated before, to, dem to drill down to my state to get more detailed information about my state. I have the ability to look at, if I'm dealing with talking to an ag producer or an agricultural group of folks, to drill down to the impacts of the drought on that particular you know, uh, um, commodity, if you will. And then I can further start to drill down to vegetation if I have a veg vegetation drought indicator that's in my state drought plan. And this all helps to inform whether or not the drought is shaping up. So I have information not only at my fingertips in the form of ready-made maps and graphics that I can quickly translate in a PowerPoint presentation or in a discussion with a producer or a discussion with a business owner, but I can also start to look at these, these are all updated as they come out, I can start to evaluate this, oh, am I starting to see one of my triggers hit? In the Colorado State Drought Plan, we have one of the triggers is certain value of the Palmer Drought Index. Well, by going through this process, I can look at the Palmer Drought Index and I can say, have I hit that trigger? Does that, has the trigger that's been identified in my state drought plan, plan or my local plan has it been triggered? And if so, then I quickly go to what's my response supposed to be? So by having all this information in one localized area, I can quickly start to identify what is relevant to my utility, what is relevant to my state, what is relevant to my county for decision-making purposes. What do, and, and most of this information is easily exportable so that I can get it out into a PowerPoint, I can get it out to the media, I can send it to a newspaper, I can send it to a reporter and say, here is a piece of information for you to use to help with your story as you start to talk about the drought that's shaping up in this county. So with that, I'm going to kind of end my presentation and, and take any calls or any questions, I'm sorry. Um, I think I'm going to transfer the, the, uh, 
the screen back to you, to the organizers, and uh, I'll be willing to field any calls about how I've used this in the past or how it could be used. Thank you, Viva. That was fantastic. Um, for people that are listening, if you want, you can use the question pane in your web controls on the right of your screen to ask Viva questions. All you need to do is type in the question and click send, and then Lauren will read them out to us. Lauren? Okay, great. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Viva. We have a few questions that have come in. From what data source are the soil moisture measurements taken? Okay. So the ones that from the soil moisture tab, I'm assuming, and so that is um, that actually, I would, I, you know what? That's a good question. I don't know if Nancy has a question, has the answer to that. I know that um, it's coming from a series. It's, it's coming from the Climate Prediction Center, obviously. But I think the question is more at a high resolution. Where is the Climate Prediction Center getting their information, their data from? And to be honest with you, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I, I don't want to speak out of turn. But I don't know if Nancy, if you know. Not off the top of my head, but I can be looking it up while you keep talking. Okay. So Barbara, we can go to another question and maybe Nancy.